Number one is bandanas. That's right, there's no intro. And out of everything on this list, bandanas have the single greatest number of uses. Most often I use them as blindfolds because not only does removing someone's vision add an additional layer of difficulty to an otherwise easy task, but it forces the members of your group to rely on each other. They can be used to denote teams, tie people together at the wrist or ankle, or even just as a small little object to grab for a game like Paranoia or Offering of the Ducks. The cheapest bandanas that you'll find are around a dollar each and the higher quality ones are two dollars each. Unless you plan on putting these things through some serious usage, I think the cheaper ones are better for what you're going to use it for, and so I think that these ones on Amazon are perfect. They're multicolored, you can choose how many you want, I would say two for each person in your group is nice to have, and best of all, if you buy these specific bandanas, a portion of what you spend goes back to actually fun, and so we can reinvest that in even more valuable content for you. And actually, all of the materials that we'll talk about in this video have an affiliate link in the description, but don't think that I'm just getting paid to say nice things about these products. I wrote this script and then found the Amazon listings that I thought were best, and then got affiliate links for those items. Anyway, here's just a couple of games you can play using bandanas that we've already made tutorials for, but there's honestly so many more. Throughout this video, I'll reference a lot of games and they are all linked in the description, but if you stick around to the end, you will find a new resource that makes finding games even easier than it's ever been before. Next up is an object I thought I would use a lot, but then once I got some, I realized that I use it even more than that. It's painter's tape. It can be used to tie people together, and I mean that in the full body kind of way, or what I use it for every meeting is to mark something out on the floor. I mark out bases for kickball, I mark out boundaries for what is considered a safe zone, I use it to label things, and one time I even used it to create a blindfolded obstacle course in the hallway. Here's a few games that explicitly use painter's tape, but you will honestly use it way more than you think. And if you're not using painter's tape for painting, then the only difference between the different kinds is the width, and so just pick up a one inch set, preferably in a variety of colors, like the one we have linked in the description. The next item addresses is one of the biggest problems I have working with middle schoolers. Young people are inherently violent, but hitting people is bad. Well, pool noodles fix that because you can absolutely smack somebody and they're fine. The cheapest ones you can get are like $2 each, but I would recommend getting them for closer to $4 each because the cheap ones are flimsy and the whole point is to get some solid contact. You can normally only buy them in their full length, which is all right, but most games are better when you've cut them in half so that they're closer to 30 inches. You can use them in my all-time favorite high energy game, Chaos. You can use them in the sneakiest game of Shaker Showdown, or you can even use them to play pool noodle hockey. And I think the ones that we have in the description are the best bang for your buck. And can you really talk about essential youth group materials if you don't talk about dodgeball? Not only are there an infinite number of variations on the normal game of dodgeball, there's a million other games that utilize dodgeballs in a unique way. You can use them as a kickball or as any other kind of ball really, or for games like the Gauntlet or the Flailman. Go watch our dodgeball variations video, by the way. I think that the Go Sports dodgeballs are good enough quality. I bought them years ago and they're still holding up. But if you only end up getting six dodgeballs, you'll probably find yourself wishing you had more. I bought two packs of six and then had another seven donated to me and I use all of them consistently. Plus, if you get the ones that we have in the description, it comes with a nice bag that holds like 20 anyway. I think the six inch ones are better than the seven inch ones because young people have an easier time throwing them. But at the same time, the older kids can really whip these things. So just know your group. Next up is small cones. And while their uses are similar to painter's tape, there's a couple of key differences. For one, you cannot use painter's tape to mark something outside. And so if you're outdoors, you'll need cones to denote things like finish lines. You can also use cones over and over again. I bought 20 a few years ago and I'm still using the same 20 today as opposed to painter's tape, which you have to get rid of after every use. However, if you need a boundary that can be stepped on repeatedly or something that will never move, then painter's tape is the better call. But I still use both. Even if your space has clearly marked lines on the floor, cones still help make sure that there's no confusion. There's a few times where I've needed to use all 20, but most of the time I just grab like eight and then use them to mark out two end zones. And while the high energy games are great, it's still nice to have some games for right before you go into a serious time or as you're winding down. And for these scenarios, whiteboards are your best friend. They're used for question and answer style games where you want everyone to write down their answer and then reveal it at the same time. They're used for Pictionary style games where you've got someone drawing something while everyone else guesses. And there's a lot lot more variations of Pictionary than you might think. Or you could even give them a whiteboard to sketch out their ideas before they attempt a challenge like Night Moves. And shameless plug for our jumbo letter tiles because if you turn them over, you can write directly on the back of them like a normal whiteboard. So check the description for the best whiteboards as well as the jumbo letter tiles. And I've saved a weird one for close to the end because I never actually decided to buy these. They were just already at the church when I got hired, but I love them. They're the little scooters that you use in gym class. These games are stellar for relay races and it's rare that you're 
your group is playing games with scooters anywhere other than with you. They're a surprisingly good mix between competitive and goofy, and they're just plain fun. We haven't made any tutorials for games that use scooters at the time of making this video, but I'll quickly list off a couple that I've played personally that I think work great. Hungry Fumbly Hippos involves putting a person on their stomach on a scooter and then two other people grab them by the ankles. Then you whip that person into the middle of your space to try to trap as many loose balls as they can with like a laundry basket or something similar. The three leg race was inspired by an old Stephen Colbert segment where you have each team race to complete entirely unrelated tasks that each take approximately the same amount of time. And one of the legs of my race was to have everyone on your team complete a lap around the gym on a scooter. And we've also just done straight up relay races where the way that you sit on the scooter changes each time. The scooters I've linked in the description are the bigger size which you definitely want and I think they're a good value. I love supersizing games and an exercise ball is a perfect way to do exactly that. We've made a video on Giant Gaga and you might remember the Star Wars balls section of our dodgeball variations video, but I found a few other uses as well. For example, you can play oversized volleyball where you just set up a net but then have all of the floor be in bounds and then otherwise the rules are the same as normal volleyball. You can also play oversized dodgeball with a bunch of exercise balls or you can play a regular game but there's one exercise ball and if anyone from your team gets hit by that thing, then your whole team loses. I think the best size is around 30 inches and you only really need to buy one so your money goes a long way. The only bad part is having to pump it up manually every time. And I'll give you one bonus material because you stuck all the way to the end of the video. I just love using red solo cups. They're useful for games like Odd Man Out where you actually drink out of them, but they're also great for games like Cupside Down, Ultimate Frisbee Bowling, or Head, Shoulders, Knees, Toes Cup. Just make sure to separate the cups that you use for drinking from the cups that you use to play games. Out of all the tutorials we've posted so far, if you had just these eight items, you would be able to play four times as many games as if you didn't have any of them. But we still wanted to make finding the right games for your group as easy as possible, and so I want to introduce our newest free resource, the Game Index. This tool on our website allows you to filter the countless games that we have to exactly fit your group's criteria. You can select your group's age, whether you want games that are played indoors or outdoors, how large of a space you meet in, the energy level, and you can even put how many people are in your group. Plus, if you want to, you can go to the materials and select what you already own, and that way you're immediately ready to run every game. As you can imagine, I'm pretty familiar with the games that we make tutorials about, but even I use the game index because it's just so useful in finding the perfect game for the moment. To access the game index, just click on see all games here on our website, but if you're watching this in the future, then there will be a link directly to it from the header. And if you're still here, subscribe because you obviously liked this video.